Bitcoin prices are falling down at a faster rate than we could have ever expected. The volatility of oil prices and our dependence on it is a recipe for disaster. If oil prices were to fall anymore, we would have social, political, and economic repercussions in Kuwait and the region. Before we get too gloomy, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Fuzz, and I currently go to high school at the American International School of Kuwait. I've developed a passion for history, culture, and politics, inspired by my love of books, traveling the world, and keeping up with the news from a young age. However, my love for history roots beyond that, as I've always found it extremely interesting to see how societies functioned, how people interacted, how governments were run, and to learn about the vast empires and civilizations that existed all around the world. To me, learning about history was like having a time machine that allowed me to see how people and society were like in the past. Unfortunately, that is not an interest that I could share with many young people of my age, as most of them immediately dismiss history, considering it boring and irrelevant to them. However, and contrary to popular belief among young people, the value of history to us is indisputable, as Confucius once said, study the past if you would define the future. Therefore, I was inspired to, rece to research Kuwait's history before the discovery of oil, and to learn how my ancestors lived and survived in the past. Society and life before oil were tribal. Houses were built close to each other, and Kuwait was spread into residential areas with names such as Qibla, Murgab, and Chur. The pearl industry was the backbone of Kuwait's economy, as Kuwait did not provide any agricultural income, and it had no local industries except for shipbuilding. Thus, the main reliance was on the sea, and fishing and pearl diving were one of the few ways that our ancestors had made a living. Pearl diving was a long and strenuous process that required pearl divers to leave their homes, families, and loved ones for four months of every summer, often facing all sorts of difficulties at sea, like shark attacks, heat exhaustion, they were traumatized to the extent that some of them had imagined beasts underwater as told by the stories of generations of their descendants. As a result, Kuwaiti men were strong, fit, and able to face adversities. Trade plays a significant role in the development and prosperity of every nation, and the leaders of Kuwait, the Sabah family, placed great importance in trade, as Kuwait did not provide any agricultural income. Kuwait became an international trade center due to its strateg strategic position at the head of the Arabian Gulf. It had good relationships with neighboring countries. Kuwait's major trade partner was Iraq. It imported basic needs from Iraq like wheat, dates, fruit, vegetables, and clothing. On the other hand, Kuwait sold pearls in Baghdad's markets, creating a major trade partner with mutual benefits. Kuwait's economy continued steadily developing until a boom at the early 19th century, which led to a massive growth for the Kuwaiti economy due to the following reasons. The leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mubarak al-Subah, who ensured that Ku the trade in Kuwait was law-abiding and incorrupt, M the immigration of many people from neighboring places like Najd, Persia, and Iraq, who introduced their knowledge on trade and helped bigger ships that could go beyond the borders of the Arabian Gulf. And last but not least, which was the, se the secret treaty between Britain and Kuwait, which meant British ships would land in Kuwaiti ports, carrying goods and passengers with them, introducing Kuwait to a whole new world, a world with future trade partners. Kuwait's economy continued steadily developing until in the 1920s, the pearl industry was suffering because of the demand for Japanese cultured pearls and less demand for Kuwaiti pearls by nations like the United States and European countries. This put Kuwait into a stage of financial recession. However, and against all the odds, Kuwaiti people remained hopeful and optimistic of their future. As I've always heard of oil exploration in neighboring countries like Bahrain and have seen black traces in the ground, which I considered a sign of hope. 
Years later, oil was discovered at the Bagan field in February, 1930, February 22nd of 1938. The first export was on 1946 when His Highness Sheikh Ahmed Jabir Subah turned the silver wheel to announce first Kuwait's first crude, crude oil export aboard the British tanker, British Fusilier. Traditions, values, and beliefs passed from one generation to another is a, tra is a tradition unique to the Gulf. However, no matter which part of the world we come from, history is essential to us, as it answers us questions like why we live the way we live and helps us understand, change, and see how far we have developed while providing us with a sense of identity. To sum it all up, Kuwait has been through a similar crisis in the past, and with perseverance, dedication, hard work, and a little bit of luck, our ancestors were able to face all the difficulties and overcome all hurdles in building the, the nation we are part of today. Another crisis is on the horizon, and by learning from our past, we will be able to develop our beloved country, Kuwait, and create our own history for future generations to come, to be inspired by in time of their struggles. In the words of humanitarian leader and the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Subah al Ahmed al Jabr Subah, building a nation civilization is an ongoing process that never stops. It entails us working on all aspects of a nation. After all, generations are like waves, taking over from one another, just like the sea, which wouldn't be a sea if it weren't for one wave taking over from another left off. Thank you.